Hi everyone, it's Mr. Bredekamp here again. Let's take a look at some major networking concepts. So what we need to cover here are protocols, TCP IP, routing, routers and the client server model. So what is a protocol? It is an agreed on method and rules that electronic devices use to exchange information. They deal with hardware connections, control data transmission and file transfers. They specify the format of message packets sent between computers. So if we take a look at the transmission control protocol, internet protocol that is used on the internet, it is an industry standard suite of communication protocols that enables interoperability. Now suite in this case means a group of protocols that together make up TCPIP. So TCPIP isn't just one protocol, it is a collection of protocols that perform different functions and allow computers to interoperate and communicate over the internet. It allows the linking of devices running on many different platforms. So you can take a Macintosh and it can speak to a PC, you can take a PC and it can speak to a Unix, Linux system, all these different platforms, all these different systems, tablets, phones, laptops, PCs, desktops, anything, servers, mainframes, supercomputers, they can all talk to one another thanks to TCP IP. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol and it operates at the OSI model's transport layer. So transport in this case, think of it as a fleet of trucks and the trucks provide transport and you can put anything you like on those trucks. The trucks just keep going. It establishes a link between hosts and ensures that the, um, it ensures message integrity and sequences and acknowledges packet delivery. So TCP would say, all right, um, I'm going to send you 10 packets. Here's number one, here's number two, here's number four, here's number five, here's number seven, here's number eight, here's number nine. But there's packets missing. So TCP will make sure that it asks the sender, uh, hey, there are packets missing and those packets will be retransmitted. It also regulates data flow in that it will tell a sender how fast to transmit data to slow down or that it can speed up. Internet protocol, that's the IP bit, operates at the OSI model's network layer. It is responsible for packet forwarding. It divides, uh, it's divided into network address and node address. A packet is a collection of binary digits sent from a computer to a computer over a network. It includes, includes message data and control characters for formatting and transmitting. Routing is the process of deciding which path data takes. It's determined by the type of network and the software used to transmit that data. Now I just briefly want to go back to IP over here where they say that an IP address is divided into a network address and a node address. Now a node in this case you can consider to be a single computer and the network uh, is just that, a network. So you can say that well there are many different networks so the network address needs to point to a specific network and then a specific computer on that network. So you could say that somebody lives in Cape Town, that's the network, and they are at number 12 Adderley Street, that's the node address. A packet is a collection of binary digits that make up um, the data that you want to transmit and routing is the process by which you decide which way a packet is going to go. It Must it go to this network? Must it go over this link? Must it go this way? Must it go this way? And routing is controlled by devices called routers and routers handle packets. A router uses a routing table to decide which packets go to 
which locations and this routing table is generated automatically so a router would know that destination A can be reached over link number one and destination B can be reached over link number two and destination C can be reached over link number two as well so if it gets a packet that is destined for destination B it knows to send that packet over link number two and so on a router will therefore determine the best possible route for a packet and the decision about selecting a route to follow on a network depends on uh, the speed of that link, uh, the latency of that link, in other words how long it takes for the data to actually travel over that link. Centralized routing is where one node is in charge of selecting the path for all of the packets and distributed routing relies on each node or each computer to calculate its own best possible route. Routers are network connection devices containing software that connects network systems and controls their traffic flow. It chooses the best path for packets based on distance or cost or both. It prevents network jams that delay packet delivery and it can handle packets of different sizes. A static router requires the network manager, the, the network admin, to give it information about which addresses are on which network. A dynamic router can build tables that identify addresses on each network. It is used more often now, particularly on the internet. The client-server model, the software runs on the local computer and communicates with the remote server to request information or services. The server, a remote computer on the network, this provides information or services in response to client requests. The advantage is scalability, in other words the ability to grow. The presentation is how data is returned to the client. The application is the software processing requests for users. Now, they jump in here for whatever reason with uh, the presentation layer and the application layer in the OSI model. The presentation layer deals with how data is returned to the client. In other words, if an email was encrypted, the presentation layer will decrypt the email and give it to the application program, i.e. your email reader, to uh, allow you to read it. The client-server model, the server can also provide data management and storage operations. It can provide application services and presentation services, of course. It is a two-tier architecture. The client communicates directly with the server. It's effective in small work groups. The advantages are that application development, speed, simplicity and power. The drawbacks are changes in application logic require modification of clients resulting in upgraded modification costs. Now, application logic. You can have some of a program running on the client and some of the program running on the server and if you change the way the program is structured now all of a sudden you've got more software running on the server or more software running on the client it changes the way that the two communicate and you have to make modifications. <clears throat> so here we have a two-tier client-server architecture. We've got a server speaking to a database management system. It also has certain stored procedures and validation rules. So the clients at the bottom, they can enter data into the server. The server checks the data is valid according to the rules and then stores it in the database using the database management system. N-tier architectures is an attempt to balance the workload between the client and the server. Remove the application processing from the client and the server and place it on a middle tier. So for example, a three-tier architecture. The advantage is improved network performance. The drawbacks is that it consists of more network traffic and testing software is difficult. So here we have a web browser and a web server and you have application servers, multiple application servers uh, interfacing to a SQL database and a vendor system. So when you shop for something at a place like Amazon, you 
interface, you interact with a web server. The web server gives you pages that you can look at, but behind that are a number of application servers that decide uh, what it's going to display, it uh, calculates the price that it's going to display, it decides what ads it's going to put where, it w is the interactive part uh, of the page, things that you click on, showing you your um, shopping cart and so on. But in order for the application servers to show you the uh, products that you're interested in, it also has to pull from the vendor certain information about their product, the picture, the, 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 the uh, stats, the uh, performance characteristics of that item and so on. Here we have a three-tier architecture where your computer is talking to a server, an application server, and the server is talking to a database. So that's a three-tier server, a three-tier architecture. Now look at the bottom here. We've got a presentation tier, which is all about showing you something. The session tier, which is all about connecting the application tier which is all about processing and the data tier which is all about storage. A wireless network uses wireless technology instead of wired technology and a mobile network operates on a radio frequency. It consists of radio cells, each served by a fixed transmitter known as a cell site or base station. The advantages are mobility, flexibility and ease of installation. It's low in cost, the disadvantages being that it has limited throughput and range and in-building penetration problems. It is also vulnerable to frequency noise and there are security issues. Wireless LANs is an alternative to wired LANs that are characterized by having one owner and covering a limited area. Wireless wide area networks cover a broader area than wireless LANs and your mobile networks, well we continue, consist of a three-part architecture, the base station, the mobile telephone switching office and the subscribers. The technologies are developed to improve efficiency and quality. Now people, when you speak to somebody on a cell phone, let us just take a quick detour and make a drawing, alright. You may have a base station over here, so let's draw a base station. And you are over here, alright. We have a central switching office. Let's rather make that a square of some sort, a central switching office. And you have many cells, okay? Many, many, many cells. Each cell offering coverage in a certain limited area. All of these cells are connected to a central switching office or mobile telephone switching office. If you speak to somebody, all right, let's say in that cell over there, all right, so the person you're speaking to is over there, your call has to go from your phone to the local base station, to the mobile switching office, to the cell where your friend is and to your friend's phone. So the mobile telephone switching office decides which direction your call goes. But also keep in mind that your friend can move. So your friend can move. So let's say for example we have a cell over here and we have a cell over here and we have, no let's make that a different color, let's make that red as well for some reason it wants to be like that now if your friend is in this cell over here the base station 
tells the mobile switching office hey you are over here and the mobile telephone switching office knows to send your call there but if for whatever reason you are over here the cell phone tower will tell the mobile telephone switching office hey you are over here so the mobile telephone switching office knows to send your call to that particular cell so the mobile telephone switching office always knows where you are so that it can send the cells or this can send the call to the right cell now there's a limited amount of spectrum and engineers have developed clever ways to share um, the available radio spectrum in an efficient manner and the way they do that is through different techniques one is called time division multiple access it increases efficiency by 300 percent it allows carrying three calls on one channel co-division multiple access transmits multiple encoded messages over a wide frequency range and then decodes them at the receiving end so this is what I've essentially just shown the base station speaks to subscribers and they can speak to and they can use many different kinds of devices to talk to a base station the base station uh, talks to the mobile telephone switching office many many base stations can be connected to one mobile telephone switching office and the MTSO always know where you are the mobile telephone switching office can then of course also interact and connect to other networks like the global telephone network or telecom or Vodacom or whatever wireless security techniques for improving security is well includes things like the service set identifier so only if you know the name of a network can you connect to it because you can hide your networks SSID WEP which is an encryption uh, standard stands for wired equivalent privacy there are newer ones better ones EAP extensible authentication protocol Wi-Fi protected access WPA2 or A22.11i have a bit of a Google on each one of these and if you can careful don't break it go into your router settings and without changing anything just check to see what it is set to and make sure that your router has a password that is not the default so change the password because if a hacker knows what model router you have and what the default password is if people don't change it hackers can sometimes get in and make sure that your routers security features are switched on and that you are using the latest authentication and encryption standards available voice video and data can all be digitized and turned into ones and zeros and those ones and zeros can be transmitted over a fiber optic cable or coaxial cable or a wireless network it doesn't matter anymore what kind of data you're transmitting you're just transmitting data and that is called convergence everything is carried on the same network so instead of a business having a telephone system and a network you now have only a network and your PCs your data your video your phone everything is carried on the same network it integrates voice video and data so that multimedia information can be used for decision making it is possible because of a combination of technological innovation changes in market stru market structure and regulatory reform the applications of conversions convergence includes e-commerce increased availability of entertainment options like your Netflix increased availability and affordability of video and computer conferencing zoom teams consumer products and services alright so let's do a summary data communication systems improve the flexibility of data collection and transmission communication media or channels connect the senders and receiving devices and the OSI or 
open standards interconnect standardizes interactions between network computers exchanging information. The three major types of networks are local area networks, wide area networks and metropolitan area networks. Network topology represents a network's physical layout and wireless and mobile networks have the advantages of mobility, flexibility, ease of, ease of installation and low cost. Think about say 40 years ago you wanted to get a telephone you had to make sure that there was an actual wire coming to your house so somebody had to put the wire there and somebody had to come and actually put the phone in and connect it to the wire and the wire had to actually go to a telephone exchange where there was switching gear that connect to other wires so it was infrastructure heavy you had to have all the wires and stuff. Now it's a lot easier. You stick up a cell phone tower. You don't have to worry about wires. You give each of your subscribers a phone and a SIM and off you go. Instant. Quick, 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 quick. Even people like Telcom now are switching from having a wired network to having a GSM wireless cell phone based voice network moving away from wires and embracing cell phone technology simply because in South Africa we have a somewhat unique problem of people stealing wires frequently um, so a wired telephone network is no longer practical but also you can roll out and expand a wireless telephone network much easier and quicker. It is also more reliable uh, because if there's a cable break you've got to send somebody out to fix the cable where if a base station goes down you can maybe adjust another base station's coverage area to take over quite easily. Thank you everybody it was nice talking to you I hope you enjoyed it and uh, have a listen to it again and ask Mr. Smuts if there's something you didn't understand. Okay Ciao.